long. We're going to talk about some speeches. There were a few yesterday. <laughs> was there? Was there? <laughs> wait, wait, a few combined into one? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. So if you, if you missed it yesterday, you missed it. In fact, I missed it in real time, and a lot of you probably did, too, because it was Saturday afternoon. You may have been doing things with the family. Who knows? Catching up on some chores. Well, President Trump took to CPAC after his trip to Hanoi. He hit the stage. He didn't just hit the stage. He hit it for two hours and two minutes, the longest speech of his presidency. And you could tell he was happy to be, to be amongst his people, amongst his base. And boy, did he deliver. This is the president. If you missed it yesterday, we got the highlights for you yesterday at CPAC. You're energized, you mobilized, and you're engaged. And I gladly stand up next to you. Collusion with Russia. The collusion delusion. Unfortunately, you put the wrong people in a couple of positions, and they leave people for a long time that shouldn't be there. And all of a sudden, they're trying to take you out with bull****, okay? We will always defend America's borders. Our immigration system is so broken, folks. The New Green Deal, or whatever the hell they call it, the Green New Deal, right? I encourage it. I think, to, uh, I think it's really something that they should promote. I just want to be the Republican that runs against them. Could that be? <laughs> we believe in the American dream, not in the socialist nightmare. Democrat lawmakers have totally abandoned the American mainstream, but that's going to be good for us in 2020. They're embracing open borders, socialism, and extreme late-term abortion. We're going to do it, I think, again in 2020, and the numbers are going to be even bigger. Rachel, where do we start? Well, I, let's just start with how he came out on stage. How awesome was that? He comes out and he just hugs the flag. And you know, I, I talked to some people about it afterwards and they just said, you know, this is what I love about Donald Trump. They can say whatever they want. I, in my deepest part of me, I believe he loves America. And that moment, I mean, I can't imagine any other Democrat running yeah. for Congress or for, for president that would have made that gesture. Well, that's a good point. You know, <laughs> I, Sorry. Covered, I, I covered CPAC for 23 years, going back to my radio days. And uh, in an off election year, CPAC doesn't really get as much attention. There aren't candidates. And of course, you have an incumbent Republican president. So the expectation that anything significant and huge was going to happen in CPAC were low until Donald Trump, who has now proven that he fully, fully has command of the understanding of the media in the power of what to do, and he gives this speech, and it is what everyone is going to talk about today and likely throughout this week. Boy, that's right. CPAC can be a contentious place. It can. It's where new currents of conservatism or whatever you want will make their way in, and this is as united as it's ever been seen. The base is completely behind this president. He talked one of the biggest applause lines, free speech. He brought the kid who was punched uh, in Berkeley up on stage with him. We're going to have him on the show later on today. He talked about free markets, how socialism is about power for the ruling class. He talked about foreign policy. One of the stories he told was, we spent $7 trillion in the Middle East, and I can't even land Air Force One with the lights on. I mean, it's, it's, he has an amazing way of telling that story. He talked about free trade, and he talked about telling jokes and having fun. How the fake news media takes you literally all the time, no matter what. He said, Russia, where are the emails? Find me Hillary's emails. And he's clearly part of what he does. He's an entertainer. He went off script. If you haven't seen this speech, go back and watch. You can see it at foxnation.com. You can see it at foxnews.com. An amazing case for nationalism without really even saying it. Love your country. Protect your country. Yeah. It's what we've got. It was a message for America, but it was also a message to other lawmakers. If you are a, a Republican in the U.S. House or Senate and you watch that, they got exactly what you said, Pete. This is a base that is united around Donald Trump. And so that's why you see someone like John Cornyn saying, we're going to stick by the president. Take a look. This is actually a Oh, it's not a, a clip. I'm sorry. A it's a quote. I'm sorry. We're not going to turn on our own and make the Democrats happy. That's something the base wants to hear because the base needs to be united to go to take on 2020. And, and it comes it comes as we expect the Senate soon to vote That's on right. the House resolution. That member the House passed the resolution to block the president's national uh, declaration. We know a few Republican senators have indicated that they may vote with Democrats. 
That's a strong message. Remember, the, the full context is they tried for two and a half years to pass something meaningful on the wall. The right. Republicans couldn't do it. Democrats won't do it. He tried legislatively. He has the constitutional authority to declare this emergency he has. And yet still, there's weak-spined Republicans out there that won't stand with the president. That's what John Cornyn's saying is it's clear. Now's the time to stand with